Hey everybody, it's The Move. I'm Greg, here with Dylan Clancy today of uh, Shaolin Visuals. He's usually the man behind the camera. Today he'll be in front of it. Mm -hmm. how, uh, how are we doing today? Thank you for coming. Sure. Always. All right, so uh, Shaolin Visuals. Where, do, where does that start as far as photography it begins? No, no, no. Did so me know? and my boy have had two different traje trajectories our entire life. Okay. So I had started doing video when I was really young. I was actually making like I was part of like esports before esports was a thing. Oh really? I was playing SmackDown versus Raw 2011 back in the day, and I used to edit like little promos. All for, right, like, no doubt. On what console? It was on PS3. PS3. Yeah. Okay, so cool. I was I was editing like little wrestling promos back in the day, and that was like my introduction to video editing. And like oh, I always awesome. dabbled in in college. I took some classes and stuff, but I never really considered it like a real thing I could do. Okay. And then I ended up going to work with you over at Aviator Sports. Shout, Shout out. out. Aviator Sports. <laughs> yeah. Where were they at right now? But uh, so I started doing editing for them, and I was like, I was doing so many different things over that job. I kind of needed to find my focus and what I really wanted to Absolutely. get good at. So I was like, well, I was there first day, and I can say this man, he's a jack of all trades. Oh yeah, I know how to cut it up. <laughs> so uh, I got really into video editing out of everything else I wanted to do outside of like marketing and SEO and stuff like that. So I decided I wanted to go all in on on like getting video equipment. So I would take paychecks from my job and I would just put it into all the equipment that we have around us right now and. Eventually, I got to a point where it's like, all right, I'm good with equipment. I just need to start shooting stuff. And my boy, simultaneously at the same time, he kind of saw the work I was putting in. And we used to go on photo shoots together. Like, I used to take my camera and we just go to like, I don't know, we go to like over, uh, there's a bunch of parks on Staten Island. So we just okay. go to the park and we just take pictures of his fits and stuff. But he would always ask me up to, sh he'd hit me up to shoot and I wasn't always around. Okay. I was working full time, so he'd be hitting me up at like two o'clock and being like, "So you yo, have to find that time where it works." And then it wasn't even like that. He just bought a camera and was like, "Yo, if you can't shoot, I'm gonna get a camera." Oh wow. Okay. Like, so he started uh, photographing his friends, and he became like someone who got really into photography. And he's one of those dudes who's once he gets into something, like that's it. He's, he's all in on it. All and right. So we got all in on photography, and it was almost like we met at the perfect time, like we did two different things, but also like we could benefit off of each other at the same time. Like he didn't know much about like videography, but he was studying so much portrait photography and it wasn't something I was particularly interested in. Sure. So we ended up going to business together because like it was a good way to like feed off of each other. Like we do music videos and sometimes we'll have like a photo shoot like during during the video, so kind of slinging. Yeah, not time. even during the video, like when I'm setting up or something, just so to keep people active and get people like in sure, the, okay. In the mode of a, of a music video, so it kind of like breaks the ice a little bit. Awesome. All right, so it's so you start off taking taking uh, photos and videos. He picks up a camera one day. You guys come together, and uh, you said you started with video editing and then moved to you know shooting and yeah. This it wasn't until I got my first camera over at Avia. I was like, yo, why is no one taking videos and photos of all the cool shit that's happening here? Okay. And I just bought my own camera and I just started shooting stuff, and then that's how I actually managed to transition full time because I kind of just saw the initiative I was taking. And yeah, just, absolutely. You did some great work there, honestly. I remember that. The So as far as you guys coming together, you know, I understand you're doing video shoots, you're doing, he's taking photography, you're trying to set it up so you know everyone's active, everyone's doing things. Mm -hmm. When does the idea to actually start the Shaolin Visuals together as a business begin? Uh, I mean, we've been boys since fifth grade. And what's his name, by the way? His, name, the his name's Danny. His name's Danny. 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 Shout out to Danny Savoka. He's my boy. Uh, we were friends since fifth grade and we just kind of have like, when you have the same principles as somebody that like you, that's what the most difficult thing when you start a business, you have to make sure your principles lined up and someone you could trust. Like it's not just enough that you're talented. Sure. You, you have to have like everything lined up and everything was just lined up. And I was, I wanted to kind of get a little bit of a side hustle going and then he was enjoying photography so much. And then we were brainstorming. He used to be just shell on photography, shout out shell on photography. And, uh, we were like, well, what could we do? what can we do to expand it? And then we brainstormed like shallow and visuals, like we should go into business together. I think we were doing actually, he was getting a lot of paid shoots at the time. So I was like, you know, looks like we're building a little bit of momentum. This is pre COVID too. So we were like, we could actually do this. There's That's like, awesome. There's like, especially on Staten Island, like doing some research, there isn't many people who are doing what we're doing on Staten Island where we have a little bit of a combination of photography and videography and there's the dynamic between us. Um, all the different things that we've been getting. That's awesome. And, um, hey, yeah. you, gotta, you gotta run the street before you can run the neighborhood. Yeah, That's exactly. Awesome, so we, we've been, we don't just stick to Staten Island. We go Long Island, Brooklyn, Manhattan, all that stuff. But like Staten Island's our home and we saw all the untapped potential of like just rappers and artists and just hey. like all, the, all these people who are just- YouTube channels. YouTube channels, <laughs> just like all these people who are just 
doing their thing, but they just don't have the platform because Staten Island just looked at as like that that redheaded stepchild out of all the, all the boroughs. Sure, sure. They're, that's a very Pete Davidson take, but okay. Yeah. It's true, <laughs> so, man. Like he's allowed to shit on Staten Island because he's from Staten Island, but if someone from who isn't from Staten Island starts like throwing words at us, like we're we're gonna, we're gonna right, pull up. Hey, that's fair. That's fair. Okay, cool. So <laughs> that's hey. Hey, you have shout. If you're doing shout visuals, you're allowed to talk. Yeah, about that. whenever I mentioned, like, I had a guy I was talking to who was a client. Uh, he, I mentioned like shout visuals, like, you, you kind of get what I'm saying. He's like, oh, yo, shout in. He's like, yeah, you know, because once you say it, like, people know like what we're talking about. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you're in the so game. I guess we're gonna have to we're gonna have to assume you guys are big Wu Tang fans. Is that oh yeah, where, huge That's where top is yeah. coming from. Yeah. All right, that's cool. Ghostface and Raekwon are the top of the list of, of best MCs out there. All right, you heard it here first. Okay, awesome. So now you start doing shoots. You were doing shoots by yourself and doing shoots with Shaolin Visuals, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes we would have shoots that just happen to be the same client, and sometimes I do my thing and he's doing his thing. We're not always together like that. Okay, I got you. So up to date today, what are the top three shoots you've ever done? Man, uh, I was thinking about this too. The top three shoots that we've done is one, we just did a, a vlog recently with Bailey Claffey and Samantha Luck, which was so much fun. Okay, it was, cool. our, it was the first time like I was just- Shout out to them. Shout out to them. Like we were filming the entire time and we got like about 16 minutes of usable material and I put it in the vlog and it was like the funniest shit ever. We had okay, a great time. Okay, awesome. Uh, my second favorite shoot was for my music video, Dirty Anna. We were in, uh, his name is Little Walt. We were in this, this okay. his friend's uh, basement apartment. Okay. And we had shot like the first day of, of uh, Little Walt's Dirty Anna was so much fun. Like it was just great to be able to have like that opportunity to just be able to like show my stuff and like being able to experiment with lights and stuff and have people who were. So just, you really like, got to show what you yeah what, what you wanted to show the world. You were this you yeah were your like that was my opportunity. And I'm glad that he gave me that opportunity. Like shout out Little Walt. Um, and then my third favorite shoot was probably right after the entire. Um, right after COVID had happened, there was a bunch of protests for Black Lives Matter. Sure. And it, I don't even consider it a photo shoot. Like my boy was telling me like, my favorite photo is the one photo of the girl holding up a sign. And um, I think it felt more like an obligation than it was a photo shoot, but it has to be my favorite photo shoot, just being able to show out for Staten Island. Sure. Just for that event. And also- And it's pretty real. You know? it, it was a real moment. And that's why I always love about photography is never like, I mean, like the posing and the models are, and like the, the lighting and all that stuff's important. But like when you get the story behind it and just like being able to be there and just see Staten Island show out for something that's so important. And there's just to be there and just see how, how everyone was like pushing propaganda saying like, oh, you know, it's like it, violent protest, but it wasn't like that on Staten Island. It was, it was just, we walked down Highland Boulevard up to the, the precinct and everyone was like spoke their piece. There was no, no violence. There was no rioting or that's anything great to like hear, that. Honestly. And you know, like that's, Probably my favorite shoot that we've done, but I don't even consider that a shoot. But I mean, yeah, it's pretty it, real. It, it, it needs a mention. Honestly. Absolutely. All right. That's hey. That's that's doing your part where you can. You yeah, and that's that. what we've always been about. Like shallow visuals, people come first, and we always want to be able to put on for like, for instance, one Sunday we went to this place called the Hop Shop right when they had an open mic, right when regulations started to like wind down a little bit, and then they wound up again. But it was great to see all those artists out there, and we I recorded like five or six, seven different artists, and I sent it all to them. And whether they posted it or not, it doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, just just being able to show my face and be able to support my community, that's what Shallow Visuals is all yeah, about. Everyone's out there looking for content. You guys really look at Shallow Visuals. Mm -hmm. They, uh, all right, that's it. Now, I know just a little bit about you working, you know, working side by side with you for you know, about a year and a half. I know you were really into you know, the, 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 the movie idea as well. Mm -hmm. So I had a question for you today. If you could shoot, be a part of the film crew, be the head, photo head, head of photography, videography, for any movie director, dead or alive, mm -hmm. this is a bit of a, uh, we're, we're changing the top five rapper question a little yeah, bit yeah. for you. If you could, if you could do any work for any director, that dead or alive, who would it be? It would be, I thought about this too, it would be Edgar Wright. And I don't know Edgar if you know Wright. who that is. Uh, not off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah, so uh, Edgar Wright's like a, British film director who made the movie Shaun of the Dead. Oh, okay. And he made the movie Hafas. Absolutely. Okay. With, with the, Simon Pegg. At World's and End. Yeah, at World's, World's End. End. That, that, that movie's fire. Yeah. I always liked his. He also did Baby Driver. Oh, did he? Yeah, he did. And I also, what I really enjoy about Edgar Wright is how fast paced his style is. Like, that's kind of what I try to. When I make a short film, I try to emulate that because the fact that 
just a simple transition of like turning a car key and how he's able to just do a snap zoom, zoom, a snap zoom, yeah. hit on the hand right when he's turning the key. Like that little thing, those little things sure. all add up into making a movie so much better paced than if like, for instance, it's just a long take of him just going in the car and just turning on. Like sure, there's a place for that, but I always love the energy that Edgar Wright has behind his directing right, style. shout out to Edgar Wright. Yeah, shout out, for sure. If you ever need a videographer, this is your guy. All right, that's lit. Uh, <laughs> And as far as a favorite rapper, I know we mentioned some of the Wu Tang guys. Mm -hmm. Do you have Do you have a favorite rapper all time as of today? As of today, like alive. someone coming up? No, just they are, has to be alive. They have to be that alive. Be what we said. Uh, man. Or how about this? I, uh -huh. If you could shoot any rapper's video, who would it be? Be uh, it either be Kendrick Lamar only because of how unique as sound is okay or be someone like jid who just spits okay cool but i mean both phenomenal rappers oh yeah both phenomenal rappers but kendrick definitely tries to push things more musically where he's not always stuffing his tracks with bars sure where jid is just spitting that's yeah. fact i mean with kendrick there's the always forementioned uh, pulitzer prize he won you know yeah. so his, his music's yeah. a little different than everybody else here. but that's really cool that's just the pressure he puts on himself and i think also i mean some of these videos that jid's coming out with i mean they look real fun to be on set yeah no like i, I would love to just do someone who's just straight spitting for an yeah. entire track i think that'd be dope yeah i think there's i think there's something to say in that where if the guy's really spitting bars there's a lot you could do around him mm -hmm with the music video, or you can take it in a simplistic approach. There's so much more you can do when, if there is an art in the music, you know, if there's a story, you kind of have to stick to a story, mm -hmm. you know? I just, I just, whenever I enjoy someone's music, it just makes making the music video so much easier. It's just, yeah, that, that, I cause that, 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 that's something that comes up sometimes is sometimes you just don't like the track. Well, yeah, cause I feel like if you understand the story, it makes it easier to tell it. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean like how much more in your face can you get than just rapping? Yeah, that's true. That's absolutely true. So as far as moving forward, or actually let's we'll pull it back first. With 2020, was there any you know restrictions? Were you guys able to go out and do shoots? How did you know, how, what was the workaround there? Well, we actually were pretty lucky considering most productions are like huge crews, sure. but it's just me and my boy. Or sometimes it's just us. So we were, I'm able to, I'm a one man band. Like I can set, you see every day, like I can set everything up if I need to, but obviously having people on the set helps. But there were a lot more smaller scale projects and people who were just trying to get content out there that, you know, they took advantage of like what I offered. Okay. And the same thing with my boy is uh, usually it's just him, a camera and a model and at an uh, abandoned location where there's not that many people anyway. Yeah. So it was might so not, you guys were able to get it done a little bit. Yeah, we were able to get stuff done. We had our sights set on like bigger stuff before COVID hit. Like our, our plan was just to get on bigger productions as things revved up, but then everything halted. So we kind of just how to just keep busy. Like I had to make, I made two short films just by myself in my room. Really? Yeah, like I had, a, my brother had just moved out so I had an empty room upstairs. And, and you just got it done? And I just made two short films up there by myself. I wrote the scripts and I acted. Okay. And, and I, this is what I had to do. I had to do what I had to do. <laughs> have, to, have to stay busy. Now I have another question. I know you started a podcast. That would be on the Shallow Visual YouTube channel. Yeah. Check that, check that out guys, Shallow yeah. Visuals. Um, now, I've seen a bit of the podcast here and there, and I know there's a, a pretty good one about men versus gorilla. Oh, yeah. My boy has been championing that uh, he could take on a gorilla. And this is Danny or another boy? No, Danny. Okay. Yeah, Danny thinks he could take on a gorilla in a fist fight, and then we had a breakdown, like, why it would never work. We, we broke Check this video out. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's definitely something. No, we tossed this idea around a lot, and I had a question, and I figured if you do this research, you might have a, a good take on it. Gorilla versus bear. Who you got? Um... I'm gonna take the gorilla only because of his mobility. And I also think the bear would have difficulty breaking the gorilla's skin. Because the gorilla's skin is so tightly wound up. Okay. Like, the gorilla, it's a grizzly bear, I'm assuming, right? So I would take it at the apex. At the apex? Both, both of their apex. Yeah, no. Nah, I, I would probably take the gorilla, honestly. All right, yeah. I got, I'm, I'm taking. Just the opposable thumbs is a huge difference. See, yeah, you're pointing to his thumbs. I'm pointing to the claws of the. Bear. Oh yeah, no, the claws, the claws will mess him up for sure. That's where I go. That's where I go with the bear. The ba bears are humongous beings. I don't know who has the stronger bite though. I think it might be the bear. I think. 
I'm not 100 percent sure, but the strongest bite when we talked about this in the video was a hippo, and I forgot what the PSI for it was. All right, no doubt. Like I said, take that video yeah, out. But a hippo would, would fuck them both up. <laughs> All right, so stay away from hippos out there. Yeah, no, hippos are the most dangerous thing in the world. If you see one, run the other direction. Actually, Get run, out. run the zig zigzags. I would recommend. <laughs> okay, absolutely. Thank you for the hippo hippo advice. Yeah, hippo so defense. Got, <laughs> yeah. So does this mean you got you got Kong over Godzilla? No, I got Godzilla over. All right, thank God. Because Godzilla got the the, the, the breath. Yeah, the X-ray vision. Like people, people you see be it? sleeping on this. You game. haven't seen it. Not yet. yet. I, I have not seen it. The atomic breath is a game changer. All right, I gotta check it out. The <laughs> um, well, and hey, I gotta say, with all the work you've been doing with us, we, we can't thank you enough. Uh, one thing I will say, the Bravado Promotions stuff you did back in the back in the thing. Mm. That was pretty cool. Have you done anything? I know you mentioned the hop shop. Have you done any other live performances in 2020? Were you able to, you know, do any, uh, you know, do any work with artists outside of just, you know, uh, taking uh, pictures and stuff? Like, were you able to do any live shows at all? Not really, right? Because the 2020 show. Not, not, that. not necessarily. Uh, we did do a dance video over on top of uh, apartment complex, which was really dope. Oh, that sounds sick. I had a lot of fun with that. I want to do more live performances. I want to do more dance videos. Like I think with Shallon Visuals, we always try to expand what we're doing. Trying to just try things, try new things, try to find what our niche sure. is. And you know, I really want to do more live performances and stuff. The only thing is like sometimes in places like that, just the lighting isn't that great. And Absolutely. sometimes when you got to do that setup, it's in a packed place. Like the hop shops are very packed in like spot. It's a packed in environment. Sure. So I can't be putting up these light panels and. You know, I had a microphone up there. It was like three microphone stands, one for amplification and then one just to record it. It was a mess. But like, you know, you do what you got to do. Yeah. Hey, and you, hey, you are, you are a master at getting, getting it done. Yeah. You got to figure it out. That's so, what it's about. Uh, we have one last question for you today. Well, I guess two. Uh, as far, ah, oh, we'll go with one. Is there any song being behind the camera? You've seen us do it. Any song you think we should react to or haven't reacted yet that you would you like need to, to see react to? You need to react to the music video of Rough Riders Anthem from DMX. You have to. Like, Rough Riders Anthem from yeah, DMX? Yeah, you have to. Like, All right. One hey. of the greats, DMX. RIP, man. Rest in peace, DMX. Yeah, rest in peace, King. Dylan, thanks so much for coming on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. It's the move.